Okay, so today we're working on a milk cooler here. This is a pressure differential type milk cooler made by Delfield. It just keeps the milk cold. Works off the pressure temperature relationship there, not a thermostat. Anyhow, got here because the milk was 60 some degrees this morning. I get here, check my filter, it's a little bit lightly coated. I've worked on this a while back, just had to make some adjustments to the pressure switch. I get here, they had it off, which their, their maintenance guy and me are friends and uh, He's uh, trained them to turn things off when it don't work instead of let it run. Kicked it on, you can hear the fan come on. It's running there, but my pressures didn't drop. It sounds like we got a start component that possibly is bad, or we've got a compressor that's seized up. Let's see if we can get this thing out. It's not the greatest accessibility here, but let's see if we can get it out of there and get something going. <laughs> They do use some filter media, which helps out when it hits the whole condenser coil, not just some of it. Go ahead and put that over there. See if we can get some of these bolts out. They, they bolted it in there like it's going to go through multiple hurricanes and everything else. Probably got it on this other side too, do they? Yeah, looks like it. Boy, they really were afraid it was going to come out of there. So hopefully we can get this out of there, get to those start components. Let's go ahead and get this thing unplugged so we don't get electrocuted. Put that back on, see if it's dead. Fan's not running, so must have got it. Good. Let's move all of our goodies here to the side. See if we can get this thing out. Hmm. Nope. Did they tack that in somewhere else? Yep, one more screw way back over in that corner. God bless them. Well, you would think it wasn't made in America, because why in the world would you design this so that you only have enough wire, because you know wire is so expensive that you can't pull it out. Why even make it so you can remove it? Why don't you just make us have to undo the whole thing and pull the refrigerant charge? So apparently they were in such a hurry they used this quick push together type connections that don't have a nut on it, so you're not even gonna unscrew that and take the nut out. You're literally gonna have to unscrew, unthread the armor off of it, which doesn't really wanna turn much to get it out of there, unless there's a better way to get those pins to release. We'll get it out of there, just why, 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 why? Bitching? Yeah, I'm bitching, because it's a shitty design. Finally got it out of there, screwed the armor crap up a little bit, but at least I got those pop art freaking connectors. Seems like we can get this thing out of there now. It's kind of quite the contraption we got going on here. I don't know why they wouldn't have moved the electrical over to this side. It would have made more sense. Ignoramus, engineer. Example of an engineer straight out of school, doesn't have a clue. It would have made more sense to put that right there where you could have gotten to it. A lot more sense. Okay. Got our capacitor over here. Let's see if we can get into that. We'll check the value on it, see how it's doing. We have to do some real digging to get that off there. But we have 244 microfarad on that. And it's rated for 244 to 292. So it's good. So that leaves us down to the start relay or just a st stuck compressor. This is where I'll pull any out and get on it and see what we got, see if it works. It's where it makes it really easy because I can just plug in over there at one of those other spots and test it out and just isolate all this. And then if it works, great. We could throw a three-in-one on there, but to wire three-in-one, you know, when I don't need to, to me, it's just a lot more work. It's a dead compressor to wire it up. So let's go ahead and get over here. See if we can get this panel off the compressor. So we got it out of there. You can see how tight that one uh, blue wire is there. Let's go ahead and make sure what we got here. So we got, wow, common at the top and start and run at the bottom. Start to run. Flip it that direction, start to run. All right, let's grab Annie. You guys have seen this before. 
old technology, but all it is is a switch that brings in your built-in capacitor. To me, it's just easier. I can pick whatever capacitor I want. This is the 200 something, so I go in the center. If I want to follow my amp meter there, I got high and low. I'll leave that on high. Volt meter, usually it's 120 volt. It also has a step-up transformer in it, so that if you wanted to test the potential relays, you can test those, and it had resistance on here. You gotta remember, when this was built, they didn't have amp meter, or meters that had all that crap built into it. This was pretty cool state-of-the-art thing, and this is one of the more deluxe models. There's cheapies out there that had just the start part only, and, and, and then you got start cord, which I built and I don't ever use just because this is so much easier because I don't have to worry about a capacitor getting shorted and everything else. We got it plugged in down there. Got our amp meter on high, voltage shows you have to follow the bottom one there. 110, it's not the most accurate obviously, it's not true RMS or anything like that. We're gonna push down on our start button, it's gonna put the start uh, capacitor in the circuit and then when I flip it on, I wait for a second, I release, takes it out of the circuit and then we just see what we've got for our amp crawl. We got our wires all hooked up on there, everything looks good there. Let's see what happens here. Watch the amp meter. Here we go. Started right up. We're pulling, it's five amps. So your amps are on bottom, microfarads are on top. See how it's a compound gauge? So it's running. You can come in here and see how accurate that is. Go off of black. 4.3, 4.4, and it's reading just about at five. That's pretty, pretty good for an old meter like this. This thing's gotta be somewhere from the 80s. Uh, I picked it up on eBay thing was in mint condition. The only thing I damaged on it was this. I, You got so many operations, if you're not careful, you can uh, cause a back feed because these things are doing different different types of uh, tests. Because literally, most of them cannot check capacitors, start relays, and all that other crap. It, uh, it's got so many different things in there that it can do. But we went ahead and undone it, kind of discharge it all there, which these have start capacitors with relays on, or with resistors on them to bleed them down. That's a potentiometer there to vary your uh, voltage. This literally will output uh, a 400 and some, almost 500 volts. It's got a step up transformer in here to test out those potential relays. I never use it, but you could literally check it and see if it's opening and closing where you're thinking it's supposed to, if you have the specs on it. Old technology, but it's really, what's really changed over the years. You got a capacitor, it's in a start circuit and it's removed, whether it's by current or whether it's by voltage. Not rocket science here. Anyhow, the, the compressor works. Uh, we need a new start relay, it looks like, because the capacitor tested out fine and the system ran. At this point, we need to get new start components for it. Whether or not I get them now or, or come back with them is gonna be the question. Or I can put a three-in-one on there. If I wire up a three-in-one, you gotta get power to the compressor, then you gotta get power to the fan separately, and then you're unwiring all these things. It's kind of a hassle with the way they've got this. It's such a pain in the butt. I did a video on this, you guys, I'll put a link at the top or down below, along with links to everything else, but all the instructions on how to test it, and there's all the wiring for it. All right, so we've got our new start components here. Hopefully the capacitor will fit in there. Looks like it's about the exact same size as the other one. That's the only downside of getting an aftermarket for that. Otherwise, we went ahead and got the protector and the current relay. Let's go get this done. Finally got all that back in there. One of the things they always say is if you can shake this and you can hear it rattling, it's probably fine. Cannot hear it at all. That was the problem. We found that out without shaking it, but can't always go by that 100%. Inside there's just a uh, piece of metal that gets pulled up, pulls it out of the circuit, and opens the circuit so the capacitor won't uh, blow up. This one here is a little shorter but at least the top matches it. So I'm gonna see if I can't squeeze this down a little bit, make it fit. If not, I'll have to put a wire tie on it to hold it in place. We were able to get that to hold in there and it's firm. So the trick to these is use your, to rotate that thing so it'll screw right on there. Now we can get some of these wires plugged back into their little spot and we should be able to kick it back on. We got it all bolted back in there, at least one anyhow. I'm not gonna put 50 of them in there like they did. And let's see if we can't make this fit right so it actually covers the whole coil. That actually fits better that way. And I washed it out, even though it's really not washable. But we got it, so let's poke that thing through there. Go 
got her pin there and it covers the whole coil. The fan will keep it in place. Get that back up there and let's go ahead and kick it on first to see if it runs. Helps if you plug it in. There's that. Oh, look at that. Sweet. Now, as long as it doesn't go into a deep pump down, we should be fairly okay. Let's give this a few minutes to kind of stabilize. This is a cold rail style system, so there's no fan movement. And so the pressures are a little different than normal, but it will start to frost up the side walls there and stuff. This might be why it took out the start components. It's in a rapid cycle. Could be low on refrigerant. Could be just because it's not at box temp, but you would figure if it was not at box temperature, it would keep on running. So it would not surprise me if it's a little low. I'd like to scan it. And if there's nothing in the condenser leaking, it's probably in the rails and there ain't gonna be a whole lot we can do with it. Yep, they're just kicked on again. So there's probably what's really going on. It's a 134A system, it holds 16 ounces. It's probably just slightly low. Let's go ahead and pull the refrigerant out, weigh it in, and see where we're at. We just scanned the whole thing over, and we got nothing down in here. But once I ripped that open right there, it went berserko. Now that it's aired out, it's not going off, even when it's up there in that area where I think it's leaking at in the, in the rail side. So it's a very small concentration that just accumulated nothing in there. I've pried apart the, the Armaflex there on the TXV and all through here and I'm getting nothing at all but she she went kind of crazy up here in this spot here. Uh, everything in the walls is stainless steel and kind of expand a foamed inside there so you're not gonna be able to do anything with it. In the past the factories told us to cap off one of them and then uh, go ahead and pressurize it and see if it loses pressure. If it does, then obviously it's leaking and kind of go from there. But the cost of these freeze coolers, they're, they're not going to replace it when they can just add, you know, $20, $30 with the refrigerant plus a service call. And it may last a year or two. It's just not going to happen. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get this thing recovered and weigh it back in. We've got 16 ounces in there, running right at about 35 pounds suction. It's staying on, hasn't cycled off yet. I'm gonna get a hold of their maintenance guy and let him know what's going on. I believe this was low once before. I don't know how many, how long ago it was, if it was a year or two ago or what. I had worked on it and adjusted the pressure switches and stuff on it. And after that, we were good to go. I have a feeling it's probably about every two years, maybe, possibly, maybe a little bit more that it goes low. So they're gonna to have to decide whether they want to verify for sure that this is going to need chopped apart and do the pressure test or just plan on buying a new one. Unfortunately, they're generally anymore nowadays. Everything's a throwaway society. As you'll notice here in a little bit, the sides will start to freeze up, which I think we see one right there. Yep. Yep. You can see it right there. And you can see it starting to happen over there. And you can see it happening over there. So it's starting to freeze down just like it's supposed to. No fan, just pure cold wall. And let that run over the weekend. Today's Friday, so it won't uh, won't be used. We're running right in about 33 now. So 33, let's convert that over and see what that is. For our 134A, well actually usually 34A is real close to the pressure. It's about 33 degrees. Pretty much right in there what you'd normally want. It just helps to know what they originally were. That was a little something I had to look up. So here's that start relay. As you can see, it's nothing but a coil of wires. The uh, power to the compressor is right in line with it. So it comes in here, goes out there. As the amperage increases, it pulls the switch mechanism here, gets sucked up, and that opens it up and then opens the circuit, takes the capacitor out of it. And as we look at it here, you can see that it's all burnt. There's the contact points right there and that's how it comes in and out of the circuit right there yep goes in and out that's the way the cookie crumbled that's gonna wrap this video up guys hopefully you enjoyed it if you haven't already please consider subscribing check us out on Instagram and Facebook and until next time we'll catch you guys on the next one later